first representatives of the Holly Wave are back and stronger than ever. The group has gone through a fascinating journey full of twists and turns throughout the past decade and a half, while dominating the South Korean and Japanese music industry simultaneously. Their plethora of jubilant dance pop songs, full of signature catchy hooks and flawless choreography contributed to their success and made them legends in their field. Hi everyone and welcome back to Midnight Theories and if you're new here, welcome to Midnight Theories. Today I'd like to introduce to you Kara and how they made their mark in history while revolutionizing the industry. But before we get into the good stuff, it's always best to look back and see their foundation and how they were formed. DSP Media, formerly known as Daesung Planning, was established in 1991 by Lee Ho-yeon, a legend in the industry. Lee is credited for not only helping discover, but pioneering the very foundation of K-pop through the group Sobang Cha, and later debuting key figures in the industry such as Seskis and Finkel. After their girl group Finkel went on an indefinite hiatus, DSP went on the hunt to find their new jewels to hold up the company's status in the industry. Through various auditions, DSP found their very first member, 17-year-old Kim Sung-hee. Sung-hee was the first to join DSP and had the longest training period out of all her members. Sung-hee developed a passion for singing at a very young age and knew she wanted to become a singer just like her mother who was an OST singer. Her mother was against the notion as she knew how demanding it was to make it in the industry. Despite her mother's wish to pursue a stable path, Sung-hee auditioned for DSP. The agency immediately fell in love with Sung-hee and complimented her for her perfect pitch and exceptional vocal capabilities. They immediately asked her to come back the next day and sign with the company. Sung-hee would train for three years as a soloist, even releasing an OST for the drama Three Leaves Clover. It wasn't until later that DSP decided to move in a different direction and debut Sung-hee and their upcoming girl group. From then on, she prepared to become the team's main vocalist. The second to join was Korean-American Nicole Jung. Nicole was first introduced to K-pop through songs such as Finkel's Eternal Love and H.O.T.'s Outside Castle. As she became more exposed to K-pop, she was inspired to become a singer in Korea. At the age of 14, she first auditioned for another company but was rejected due to her age. I want to try out, but then they said I went or auditioned in another company, but they said I was too young uh, at the how time. How old were you? 15, 14, I don't okay. know. Wait, maybe 14, 15? But so then, middle school. Yeah, they, they said I was too young. And so for one year, I started watching like variety shows like mm -hmm. X-Men and watching dramas to try uh -huh. to pick up my Korean at least. The next year, she filmed her audition tape and sent it to DSP. The subsequent month, she flew to Korea and began her training. As a young Korean American, Nicole had a hard time adjusting to the lifestyle, society, and the obvious language barrier. Has to do everything. Yeah, the youngest has to do everything. Yeah, the youngest has to do everything. You have to, when we go to the restaurant, you have to do the spoons, the chopsticks, the water, the water clean everything, up. clean up. And I was like, more work. I wasn't the only one that was clean, that like everyone uh, had their own place, uh, but uh, uh. I had to do the bathroom. You who got wants the, to do the bathroom? You got the stinkiest part. Yeah, who wants to do the bathroom? <laughs> it's not gonna be that clean. Yeah. Obviously. For the next nine months, she trained to be the group's main rapper and main dancer. A month after, the third to join was Han Sung Young. Sung Young entered the entertainment industry at a young age. In kindergarten, she began acting and appeared in 60 to 70 productions in minor roles. As she got older, she moved to the United States for a short period of time before returning back to South Korea with the goal of becoming an entertainer. Initially aiming for JYP, the aspiring singer auditioned multiple times over several months and ended up dropping out of school to pursue her passion. Not a single family member believed she would make it in the industry, especially her parents who were vehemently opposed to her career choice. They believed she was gifted academically and could have become a doctor if guided in the right direction. Sung Yun eventually signed a contract with DSP Media and trained as a vocalist, preparing for her debut with Nicole and Sung Hee. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
또 챙겨 입고 갔는데 승현이 형은 또 연습생으로 있었던 때니 Last to join DSP was Park y u r i the future leader and lead vocalist of DSP's new girl group. Similar to s u n g y u n g y u r i had an early start in the industry at the age of six as a child actress. When she turned 16, y u r i was accepted into DSP. In later interviews, she said she was almost accepted into one of the leading entertainment agencies, SM Entertainment, because of her distinctive features. As leader, y u r i came up with the group's name Kara, which came from the Greek word Kara, meaning joy. However, the group interpreted to mean sweet melody. <laughs> Kara are known for their timeless classics, catchy hooks, and tremendous success both domestically and internationally. However, Kata did not receive much attention from the beginning and had to build themselves up. Break it. Kata debuted with a strong female empowerment image. As you can see, Kata not only look different from what we know them today, but sound different. Break It is an R&B track that is heavily influenced by the 90s slash early 2000s and reminds me of Britney Spears' Baby One More Time mashed with Oops I Did It Again. The single is vocally driven, but leaves much to be desired by the lack of complexity. It mainly relies on Sunghee's vocals, leaving very little room for the members to shine. First Blooming did not sell at the expected rate DSP anticipated. In an effort to boost sales, Kata promoted their B-side, If You Wanna, and Secret World alongside Break It. In addition, we had s u n g y u n take on an additional role by having her participate in several variety shows, which included Han Sun Young's MSL break. This small move brought recognition to her group, though they were ultimately overshadowed by many elements. The first was a constant comparison between Kara and their predecessor Finkel. Early on, Kara were given the moniker, the second Finkel, which made the rookie group easily known to the public, but it also became a burden in a way that they were always compared to Finkel and had more aunties than other rookies. Even before their debut, Kata were able to instantly increase their popularity thanks to the moniker. However, some of Finkel's fandom strongly protested it and said, why are you guys trying to be the second Finkel? In regards to the comparison, the group said it was beneficial and inspiring. Aside from the comparison to their senior label mate, Kata debuted during the girl group renaissance, a time in which companies began to pump out girl groups as they saw them to be lucrative. In fact, 2007 was an exceptional year for girl groups, as we saw the debuts of Wonder Girls, Kara, and Girls' Generation, the holy trinity famously known as Wang Ka So. During their peak, the three groups rivaled each other for years. After gaining much criticism at debut and being overshadowed by others, Kara's first album was considered a commercial failure. Despite the lackluster response from the general public, music critics gave the album favorable reviews. In May 2007, the first Blooming won the Best New Album Award selected by the Ministry of Culture and Tourism. In addition, If You Wanna won Kara, the Rookie of the Month Award at the Cyril Digital Music Awards. And Kara were nominated for the Best New Female Group at the 2007 Mamas. After promotions, Mnet launched Kara Self Cam, a mini docuseries that gave viewers an inside look into their daily lives as well as showcasing their talent and relationships. For the remainder of the year, Kata dedicated this time to preparing for their second studio album. The group's second album was originally scheduled for the spring of 2008. However, it was subsequently pushed back when DSP announced Sungi's departure from the group. The idol had recently turned 18 and was put under pressure by her parents to focus on college applications. Sunghee clarified that she left the group to purely pursue an academic career at her parents' request. Netizens couldn't wrap their head around the reason for Sunghee's removal since she majored in music, and eventually, her work would lead her to often work with people in the industry. Videos of her would subsequently surface online as fans captured her singing at clubs in Hongdae and she would later become a music teacher. The second rumor, netizens believe it was for religious reasons, as she later married a man from the same church and devoted the rest of her life to her religion. Since then, Sungi has retired from the industry, making very few public appearances. 
Sung Hee's departure could have marked a dangerous sign for Kara. However, they were able to ameliorate the situation by replacing her with two new members. Following the unfortunate event, DSP sought out new members and held open auditions. Soon after, Ku Hara and Kang Jion joined the group, completing Kara's most recognizable lineup. <laughs> Before joining Kara, Hara was a fitting model but wanted to pursue a career as a singer. She eventually auditioned for several companies, including SM and JYP Entertainment. For a year, Hara continued to secretly audition for other companies until she was accepted into DSP Media. For the next few months, Hara trained with the rest of the female DSP trainees who were preparing for a second girl group. This group would later be known as Rainbow. For those of you who are not familiar with Rainbow, I highly recommend you watch my history video on the group as they have one of the best friendships out there post disbandment, beating any coworker allegations that many groups are facing recently. In 2012, Rainbow's leader Jae Kyung revealed on SBS Go Show that Hara was originally set to debut with her group, but she was later placed in Kara as her image fit better with them. Jae Kyung also revealed to the talk show Full House that DSP approached her to join Kata, but she declined when the label executive told her Kata would be going for a cute image. And so, the 17-year-old Gul Hara joined the group, becoming the group's main dancer, visual, and face of the group. <笑>あ、そうなんですね。<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> 춤을 추는데 흰색 얇은 면티를 입었어요. 얇은 면티를 입었는데 이게 춤추면서 이게 점점 이렇게 흘러내려. 올리지 않아. 그래서 난 우리 열심히 친 거야. 우리 팀 보면서 아 저거 의도한 거 의도한 거다. 왜냐면 그때 그런 스타일이 유행이었어요. 오프숄더 이런 스타일이. 맞아요. 그래서 아 저거 의도한 거네요. 아저 친구 계획성 있구나. 그때 이제 제가 새로운 멤버가 되기 전에 뭐 메이크업을 받아보고 헤어를 뭐 어떻게 음. 해보고 뭐 이런 과정 속에 샵에 갔었는데 승현 언니가 앉아 있었던 것 같아요. 규리 언니 첫 번째로 보고 나중에 승현 언니를 두 번째로 봤는데 아 굉장히 낯설다 되게 오, 그건 또 몰랐네요. 되게 먼 머나먼 사람 같았어요. 왜냐면 얼굴이 너무 작아가지고. The next to join was 14-year-old Jiang, making her the new maknae of the group. Originally, another trainee was chosen to join Kara, but due to personal differences between her and the agency, the trainee left the company. In desperation, DSP asked the trainees who were preparing for Rainbow one last time to join Kara, but they all rejected the offer as they felt they weren't prepared to debut right away. This is when Jiang's cousin, Kim Yong-ji, introduced her to DSP's director, Gil Jong-hwa, in 2001, Kim Yong-ji did an interview with Same Bed, Different Dreams, that she was a trainee at DSP for just one day, when the director asked if there was any pretty people around. Yong-ji responded that her cousin is really pretty. Soon after, Kang ji visited the agency and made her super fast debut as a member and vocalist of Kata. <laughs> With the new lineup intact, DSP used this opportunity to rebrand Kara. 
To avoid the same mistakes from their debut, Kara set a clear direction under the production of Sweet Tunes, giving birth to a legendary partnership. After a 10 month hiatus, Kara returned for their first comeback. Instead of releasing the second studio album, Kara scrapped it for their first mini album with the title track Rock You. Rock You or Break It, they didn't tell us we were filming, so we didn't do that well. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we thought it was a rehearsal. <laughs> I, I think it was Rock You. They didn't uh -huh. tell us it was filming. And then we got in trouble. They're like, You should post it back in, Joel. I was like, Only, it's, it's, it's a six out of ten. Uh, <laughs> for your first. From here on out, Sweet Tune would produce every Kara title track until 2013. Rock You is a cute bubblegum pop track that is a complete 180 from Break It. Sweet Tune seemed to have put a Disney filter over their voices as it's much lighter airier, and no doubtably cuter, which fits their brand new image perfectly. The dreamy guitar and bouncy beats played throughout the song beautifully, accompanying Kara's voices. The comeback was a huge concept shift from their debut, choosing to go for a softer, brighter image as opposed to the strong image and deep vocals presented in Break It, a sound they would never revisit again. <laughs> 스무 살의 이 관점에서는 나는 다큰 멋진 소민이 아니다. 나는 이제 완전 어른인데 왜 이렇게 귀여운 거 하지? 그러니까 이런 느낌이 있었어요. 근데 막상 방송을 보니까 어우 나좀 귀엽다. 귀여운데? With the new album, Kara chose to leave their past behind and recognize Rock You as their debut song, rarely ever acknowledging Break It. Break It이라고 생각합니다. 조용히. <웃음> 거야. Just like their debut, this comeback received some heated reviews from the general public as they argued over their live vocal skills, or rather, lack thereof. In the same interview with Eric Nam, Nicole shared the girls never received proper training while under the company and had to seek out personal training on their own. Training period was so short, uh -huh. and to be honest, we didn't have like a very professional training uh -huh. experience. I always felt like I wanted to learn more or uh -huh. learn more properly. Right. And we never had the time because we were so busy all the time. Rocky won over the public's hearts for their infectious energy, leading the album to receive better results from their first. Although it entered SBS Inky Giles Take 7 for the first time, something was missing. In the meantime, the Quint have released their first digital single, Good Day Season 2, a remix of Good Day and prepared for a winter comeback. The stakes were high for their next comeback. If Kara failed one last time to increase their popularity, DSP would be forced to debut Rainbow in their place. The idea of disbandment weighed above their heads each and every time they practiced and spared no effort. On November 29th, DSP Media released the group's teasers for their next comeback. The video reached 40,000 hits in a single day, which was a large amount back then. On December 2nd, Car continued to carve out their new identity with their second EP and title track Pretty Girl. With colorful backdrops, vibrant makeup, and eclectic wardrobe that reflected the fashion trends of that era, Kara showcased their playful side in a similar fashion to other releases that year. Listen, you know a song is going to be a major hit when the outfits are atrocious. Ask any second gen stan. Pretty Girl is the perfect follow-up to Rock You, as the quintet nails the bright bubbly image down. One thing about early Kara is most of their catchy hooks are English nonsense, but in the best way possible. The single 
choreography became a decent hit and had everyone singing their hyper-infectious chorus. While promoting the song, Camellia's Kara's fandom showed their support during one of their Inky Guile stages by cheering for the group with pink rubber gloves. During their comeback stage, near the end of the performance, Hada slipped on a piece of confetti. The idol was obviously embarrassed and let out a small sound that projected through her microphone. Oh, <laughs> Ah, <laughs> 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 It was reported that Hara cried in the bathroom for hours after the show. The moment was captured on television and picked up by the internet. Regardless of how scary the internet is these days, rather than netizens criticizing her, she was showered with support, bringing even more attention to Kara. To DSP's surprise, Pretty Girl did better than expected and slightly regretted that they had their boy group Double S501 and Kara promote at the same time. Pretty Girl stayed consistently high on the music charts, which allowed the group to rival some of the top girl groups at the time, but struggled to make it to number one as Double S 501's Your Man shot up the ranks as soon as it was released, as well as some other obvious hits. 2008 proved to be a pivotal year for the group and bounced back against all odds, yet this would only be a small taste of what was to come. To build upon their new momentum, Kara immediately took to their website and asked their fans to choose the follow-up single to Pretty Girl. The title track Honey off their previous EP was a clear winner, sweeping 60% of the votes. Showing no sign of slowing down, Carr released their repackage album Pretty Girl Special Edition, which was physically released on February 18th, 2009 with the lead single Honey. Honey reaffirmed the group's new identity. Big bows, princess-like accessories, and frilly dresses are the main staple for this comeback. The song is another tooth-achingly sweet electropop track that plays off the members' youthfulness. Honey became Kara's first major hit on top of the Gone Weekly Singles chart and earned them the very first music show win on M Countdown. <laughs> The single held its position for three non-consecutive weeks and became a craze in South Korea for its catchy hooks and sweet honey dance. From then on, Kara, with the help of Sweet Tunes, produced hit after hit after hit after hit and so forth. The song went on to win the group the Best Dance Award at the 2009 Mamas. Kara's Honey. Thank you. 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 Th
댄스 막상의 주인공이 됐는데 국민 그룹으로 거듭난 카라 여러분들 진심으로 수상을 축하드립니다. 그리고 저희 너무 사랑해 주시는 카밀리아 여러분 부모님께 정말 너무 깊은 감사드립니다. 더 열심히 하겠습니다. 감사합니다. By the end of March, the group's variety show appearances increased and CF deals came flooding in. Due to their newfound success, Car were able to hold their first mini concert to mark the end of their MTV show, Car Meta Friends. Following a six month hiatus, Car returned with the second full length album titled Revolution, and revolutionary it was. In late July, the quintet take. On July 30th, Car returned with their lead single, Wanna. The group still held close to a smidgen of their coyness, but upgraded it as the main focus of the album was to emphasize their maturity by breaking away from their old concept. The group first promoted the song on KBS Music Bank alongside their B-side, Mr. After the performance aired, Mr. proved to be popular against viewers due to its infectious chorus and butt dance, which was prominently featured in the choreography. Let's admit it, DSP had missed the mark with this comeback, but before anyone knew it, the public had made Mr. the lead single. Due to the explosive response Mr. received from the public, Car had no choice but to switch up their promotion in pursuit to find massive levels of fame, ultimately burying Wanted to the ground. The butt dance was choreographed by no other than Pei Yu Jung, a famous choreographer known for creating not only addictive dances but legendary choreography. Or others may know her as that intimidating dance mentor on survival shows. This wasn't the first time Kara teamed up with Pei Yu Jung. Their viral honey dated by the legendary choreographer, as well as Revolution's lead single Wana and their debut single Break It. The Hello. To this day, many people still remember Kara for this one track alone. Because of the single, Kara soared to new heights. Mr. opened the floodgates for Kara, and soon, DSP received various advertisement requests. Oh? By the end of the year, Car won the Asian Best Group at the Asian Song Festival and the Top 10 Bong Song at the Cyworld Digital Music Awards. The Mr. Craze had soon found its way to Japan, and by the end of the year, DSP tested the waters and held a fan meeting for their Japanese fans. Over 3,000 fans registered exceeding the capacity of the venue, which resulted in a second showcase. In an effort to reinvent themselves, Car released unique teaser photos that garnered interest for their dark outfits and smoky makeup. Sungyeon noted that, that this comeback would be different and chic. No longer wearing cute and eclectic outfits, the members traded their attire and concept for something bolder, an image Car was afraid wouldn't suit the group. On February 17th, Car released their 30P with the title track Lupin, their fiercest concept yet. After the popularity of the group's butt dance with Mr., netizens were curious to see the choreography for Lupin. Once again, Car teamed up with Pei Yu Jung to create magic. Lupin proved to be just as powerful and addicting, with key moves such as their signature hip swings. Car continued with advancements to their sound with this comeback. Lupin opens up with a bewitchingly upbeat arrangement full of dynamic percussion, joined by orchestral synths. The teamwork between Kara, Sweet Tunes, and Bei Yu Jung is more than legendary as it continued to prove itself as a match made in heaven, with each collaborative work becoming undeniably successful. For its heavy electronic beats that were popular at the time, the promotion track was easily marketable in Korea and Japan. Netizens responded enthusiastically to this comeback. 
The MV garnered more than 90,000 views in the first two hours and rose to number one on real-time popularity charts. While promoting the song on music shows, Sungyeon fell while performing live. In a 2020 interview, the singer recalled that she stepped on a knot from her shoe, which caused her to stumble. During promotions, Sungyeon had a separate accident where she was injured filming a CF and had to wear a cast for the remainder of promotions. Before anyone knew it, Carr had become unstoppable, winning multiple first place awards on music shows. With this comeback, Carr grew with experience and earned a name for themselves in the industry. From here on out, the quintet would release a steady stream of hit songs. 2010 was a monumental year for Kara, as they promoted not only in Korea, but saw extreme success in Japan. For the rest of 2010, Kara held international promotions and built up a fan base in Japan by holding showcase and handshake events. The fan meeting proved to be successful, with over 12,000 Japanese fans registering for their events. Ahead of their Japanese debut, the group signed with Universal Music Japan's subsidiary label, Universal Sigma, and by the summer of 2010, the group made their debut with their unprecedented hit. Mr. received its much-deserved music video, and the Japanese remake ranked in various music charts and proved to be just as prosperous in Japan. For the next four years, Carr would simultaneously dominate the Korean and Japanese music industries. On the same day the song was released, the group held a surprise performance at Shibuya 109. Although the event was not officially announced, over 3,000 fans attended the event after catching wind of their appearance. The event was intended to last 30 minutes, but due to the massive number of fans that showed up, Universal Sigma were forced to shut down the mini-concert for the safety of the people. Once again, Mr. Syndrome had taken the world by storm and brought the Holly Wave to Japan. By 2012, the song exceeded 2 million downloads, making Mr. the most downloaded song by a Korean artist in Japan of all time. In addition, in 2013, the Ministry of Culture revealed Kara made 362 million won, or roughly 341 USD, in royalties and copyright alone. The tantalizing dance was featured on various Japanese programs and other media outlets. And in 2012, Car released their own figures inspired by the hit song. The outfits were based on the group's outfits from Mr. and were sold in South Korea and Japan. This also marked the first time that a doll based on a South Korean idol girl group had been released. As their Japanese activities continued to increase, Car released their first compilation album, Car Best 2007-2010. The album ranked number 2 on the Oricon Daily charts on the first day of its release, as it sold over 18,000 copies. It was also announced that the album became certified gold by RIAJ, making Kara the first Korean group since the 1990s to release an all-Korean album that was able to break the 100,000 copies barrier in Japan. Eventually, the album exceeded sales by 250,000, making the album certified platinum. From then onwards, they continuously topped both domestic and international charts. With the group's successful debut in Japan, offers from different electronics, clothing, and beverage companies contacted the group. This also included one of the three biggest carrier companies in Japan, KDDI. In the same year, the group opened their own online clothing franchise called Karaya, in which Gyuri, Hara, and Jiyoung were chosen to be the spokesmodels. The online shop proved to be a huge success and rose to fourth place in popularity among celebrity internet shopping mall sites. In October 2010, it was revealed Kara had received a revenue of 2 billion won from endorsements in just two months since their Japanese debut. It was at this point that Kata started to release multiple singles a year to ensure that they would gain as much popularity as possible. On October 10th, Kara came back to Korea after a nine-month hiatus and released their EP and title track Jumping. Jumping was also highly successful, winning first place on Music Bank and number one on the Mudazen Awards on Inkigayo's 600th episode. This era would be their most demanding schedule yet, as Kara would simultaneously promote the single in Korea and Japan. 
Kara's first Japanese studio album titled Girls Talk included two original tracks alongside the Japanese versions of Mr. and Jumping. Girls Talk sold over 100,000 copies, which placed second on the Oricon Weekly album charts. This was the first time in six years for a foreign Asian girl group to sell over 100,000 copies in its first week in Japan since the Chinese girl group 12 Girls Band in 2004. This was only the beginning for Kara, as their popularity was taking them to newer heights. The album spent 14 weeks on the top 10 spot on the Oricon Weekly album charts and was eventually certified platinum by the Recording Industry Association of Japan. The album eventually peaked at number one on the charts and sold over half a million copies, making them the first foreign female girl group to do so. After a successful year in Japan, the group was chosen as the best rookie artist in Japan and generated $15.4 million in the country in just one year. Despite all the money, awards, and success, in January 2011, four members made a shocking announcement that could have massively changed the trajectory of Kara's career. On January 19, 2011, a lawyer representing four of the five car members, Hara, Nicole, Songyun, and Jiyoung, announced to the media that they would be terminating their contracts with DSP Entertainment effective immediately. A lawsuit was also filed on their behalf. This came as a huge shock to fans who had supported them throughout the years. In a statement by their representative, the members received poor and unreasonable treatment. The agency had allegedly tricked the members into signing an exclusive contract by saying that it was a Japanese artist registration form and signed all kinds of contracts in Japan. It was reported in 2010, Kara achieved sales of 18 billion won with their albums and DVDs alone in Japan. But shockingly, it was reported by one of the members' parents that each member only received 3 million won. To add to the mistreatment, allegedly, the members were so busy with work in Japan that they had to sleep in public bathhouses and didn't receive proper care. Pak Yuri, the leader of the group, was the only remaining member with the management company. On the same day of the lawsuit announcement, Hara withdrew from the lawsuit and rejoined the company as she apparently was not fully aware of the lawsuit's details. In the statement made by DSP, they firmly rebutted all accusations and wished to resolve the issues and reconcile with the members. They further denied that they never withheld the members' fair share of profits, stating the members were paid 3 million won, roughly 250,000 USD for their work. On January 27th, a media outlet reported that CEO of Open World Entertainment, who is leading the Young Producers Union, was behind the Kara incident, trying to poach Kara by causing them to fight with the company. Some of you may be familiar with the name Open World, as the company and CEO were involved in a serious scandal in 2012. If you would like to know more, you can watch my video, The Sinister Case of Open World Entertainment. As the battle between the agency and the three members continued, the members stayed silent about the situation, while the members' parents were the ones publicly fighting the agency. Open World CEO denied that he was the mastermind behind this and his only involvement was that he was close with the parents of the members and that they had asked him for help. The lawyer for the three remaining members released another statement giving further details of their allegations. The representative stated that they were misinformed regarding the Japanese promotions and that their relationship with the company severely deteriorated with the hospitalization of CEO Lee ho -yun. On April 28, 2011, the dispute between DSP Entertainment and Kara's three members was finally resolved and continued on with promotions. However, during the high-profile lawsuit, all the members of Kara went back to promoting in Japan due to the contracts they previously signed with the agency. The lawsuit was huge news even in Japan, making the group an even bigger sensation. More people became interested in the quartet and even started buying their albums because they believed it could be Kara's last album. On February 23rd, the group released a DVD titled Kara Best Clips, which was a compilation of their past music videos. Again, Kara set another record by ranking number one on the Oricon Weekly Composite DVD charts for two weeks and sold over 230,000 copies. This made the group the first ever foreign artist to rank number one for two consecutive weeks since the chart implementation in 1999. Continuing their Japanese promotions as per contract, Car released their third Japanese single, Jet Coast Your Love, on April 6. The original release of the song was pushed back due to the earthquake and tsunami disaster in Japan. In order to help out the affected areas, Car donated all the proceeds from sales to relief efforts. The group reverted back to the cute upbeat side for the single and won over the public's hearts. The group promoted the single on Japanese television and went on to release their fourth single, Go Go Summer, in Japan. 
both singles debuted at number one and number two respectively on the Oricon charts and Jet Coaster Love was certified gold by the end of the month. To add to their stack list of achievements, Go Go Summer earned Kara the first nomination for Best Song Award at the Japan Record Awards. <music> 2011 proved to be a perilous year for Kara, full of uncertainty and distress. However, the girls were able to pull through and triumphantly return for their magnum opus. <laughs> Fans also found this album was especially more meaningful as it was full of hope and positivity, instantaneously lifting up one's spirits after the car incident. There are some songs that just demand to be heard, and Step is one of them. This blockbuster of a comeback was the perfect blend between their dark and bright concepts, injecting their consistent electropop sound and propulsive beats with tons of retro flair. The perfect recipe for pure, unadulterated pop song goodness. The euphoric single is the perfect party anthem as the lively instrumentals felt incredibly fresh. And if you don't find yourself humming to the tune after a listen, you must be superhuman. The title song immediately topped various music charts in South Korea hours after its release and won first place on several music shows. By the end of 2011, the song garnered close to 3 million downloads and the album sold over 100,000 copies in South Korea, making it their highest selling single and album in Korea. Step received worldwide critical acclaim. In Japan, it peaked at number 2 on the RIJ digital chart and number 38 on Japan Hot 100. In America, Bin ranked the song at number 14 on its list of 21 greatest K-pop songs of all time and number 17 on Billboard's list of the top 100 K-pop songs of the 2010s. By 2020, the video had reached over 100 million views, their first MV to do so, reaffirming its status as a timeless classic. After three weeks of promoting Step, Kara returned to Japan and released their fifth Japanese single, Winter Magic, ahead of their second Japanese studio album, Supergirl. The album sold a total of 360,000 copies in pre-orders alone, making this a new record for Kara. The album eventually went on to debut at number one on the Oricon Weekly Album Chart, with sales over 275,000 copies sold, making it the group's first number one album in Japan. With it, the group broke the record set by the Nolans, becoming the first foreign female group in 30 years to top both the single and album rankings. The album was eventually certified triple platinum by the RIJ, with sales exceeding 750,000 copies. After a busy year, the group celebrated their success by appearing in both Japanese and Korean award shows and took home several major awards. Twenty twelve marked another prosperous year for Kara. On February eighteenth, the quinta embarked on their first headlining Asian tour, Carasia. For this tour, each member of Kara prepared their own solo material. Croatia completely sold out with over 150,000 people attending and had to extend their Japanese concerts for 12 more shows. In addition, the last concert was broadcasted live through 60 different theaters throughout Japan and all the tickets to each theater were sold out as well. While taking a break from touring, the group released their sixth Japanese single and first double A single, Girls Power and Speed Up. The latter was the first time Kara promoted a sleek and sexy image for a Japanese title track. The single debuted at number 2 on the Oricon Weekly Singles Chart with sales of over 99,000 copies. The album was subsequently gold certified after exceeding sales of 100,000 copies. It was also reported that the group had sold more than 1 million physical copies of their singles in Japan, making them the third South Korean artist to do so after BOA and TVXQ. As the members began focusing more on solo and Japanese promotions, the girls released one Korean album yearly. This was unlike their usual strategy. Shortly after concluding their tour, the Quinta released their fifth EP and single titled Pandora. This comeback promised a darker, more mature image from Kara as they channeled Pandora's box, reinterpreting the myths to express the most captivating and beautiful women of this generation. Camellias assumed this next comeback would be a loop in part two situation, but they were pleasantly surprised that Kara delivered something dynamically different. Kara successfully shedded their younger image and blossomed into mature and empowered women. Kara's greatest asset was their powerful and recognizable sound. While Pandora has all the musical hallmarks of sweet tunes, it also didn't feel like anything they had done before. 
The combination of charging synths, electric guitar riffs, and propulsive beats give this song a cinematic experience and doesn't let the listener catch their breath in the best way possible. As expected, the song performed extremely well. Hours after release, the album's title track topped various music charts in Korea. On August 28th, the group won their first award show on Show Champion and continued to sweep awards in other major music shows. By the end of September 2012, the mini album had sold over 70,000 copies. Success continued to follow them through the last half of 2012. On October 17th, the group released their seventh Japanese single, Electric Boy. In car fashion, the single topped multiple charts and became certified gold. The following month, they released their third Japanese studio album, Girls Forever, with the lead track Speed Up, Girls Power, and their pre-release single, Electric Boy. In 2013, Car rang in the new year with a major milestone, becoming the first South Korean female act to hold a concert at the Tokyo Dome in Japan, the largest baseball stadium in Japan's capital city. <laughs> Kara's Tokyo Dome performance was regarded as a golden holiday because of Japan's biggest holiday, Japanese New Year, and was extended to the weekend. At the time, famous Japanese singers competed for this valuable slot at the venue, but in a surprising twist of events, Kara succeeded in securing the state. The concert successfully sold out 45,000 tickets within 5 minutes. During their concert, the group performed all their biggest hits and announced there would be an anime series from the girl group entitled Kara the Animation. The show aired in Japan and South Korea and followed the members as they pursued different careers. After their concert, it was business as usual. From March 27th to July 29th, Kara released their 8th and 9th Japanese single titled Bye Bye Happy Days, Thank You Summer Love, and their 4th Japanese studio album Fantastic Girls. A week after releasing Fantastic Girls, Kara released their pre-release single Runaway, an acoustic ballad ahead of their fourth Korean studio album Full Bloom, the callback to the group's debut album The First Blooming. The promotional track Damage Lady was released on September 2, 2013. <laughs> anything we had heard from Kara yet. This time, the quintet explored an experimental sound through an edgy rock pop lens while still keeping it safe. The lead single received mixed reviews from both music critics and the general public, and for the first time, album sales began to drop. For the remainder of the year, Kara took a break from promotions as their contract renewals were right around the corner. On October 19th, the group received the Best Female Award and were just about to wrap up another year with a bang until news broke that Car might look a little different entering the new year. It was only two years ago when speculations of possible disbandment surfaced and the conversation was brought up again when Nicole and Jiang decided to terminate their contracts with DSP. The news sent shockwaves across the world as Car were in their prime. The news of Nicole's departure was announced to the media on January 13, 2014, with Jiang's departure announcement made two days later. Nicole had expressed she wanted to continue to work as a member of Kara while managed by a different agency, but DSP would not allow it. After letting her contract expire naturally, the 22-year-old decided she wanted to explore the world and follow a new path. I think it was because like I wanted to try out other things uh -huh. and I realize now that I, I was sort of young. Just try out new things and like do stuff that I couldn't do. Like I, since my trainee pe period was so short uh -huh. and to be honest, we didn't have like a very professional training uh -huh. experience. I always felt like I wanted to learn more or uh -huh. learn more properly. Right. And we never had the time because we were so busy. All After leaving Kara, Nicole went back to the US to improve her vocal and dance skills ahead of her solo debut. On October 14th, she signed with B2M Entertainment. A month later, she debuted with her lead single Mama off her EP First Romance. In 2015, she debuted in Japan and eventually signed with Diamond Music for her Japanese promotions. Since then, she opened a personal YouTube channel and signed with the new label JWK Entertainment in 2020. As for the 19-year-old Jiang, she decided to separate from the company as she wanted to focus on her education and study abroad. Jung's father stated that it would be difficult, but it was necessary for Jung to leave DSP to pursue her dreams. Months after leaving Kara, Jung signed with Sweet Power to promote as an actress in Japan. In 2015, she signed with Sony Music and debuted as a soloist under the name JY. Since then, she moved to Elbrus Entertainment in 2020 and has worked as a solo artist and actress in both Korea and Japan. Following the news, fans worried the golden age of Kara and their reign would end. 
In a press release published by the agency, they announced the remaining three members, Kyuri, Sungyan, and Hara, had renewed their contracts for another two years and promised Kara would continue to promote as usual. While fans around the world grieved the departure of two beloved members, DSP spared no time and went on the hunt for the next Kara member, this time through a survival show. Through the course of six episodes, seven desperate Chaneys dubbed Baby Kara competed for a chance to debut in one of the biggest internationally recognized girl groups in the industry. The show introduced us to many new faces that would subsequently go on to pursue a slightly different route. Kara Project is unlike any survival show most of us are familiar with. The program is very straightforward as each episode, the members practice and perform a set of hits from Kara's extensive discography. In the last episode, Hoyong Ji was proclaimed the winner and became the fourth and final member to join Kara. Before winning a prime position in the group, Yong Ji was a former core contents media and keys trainee before moving to DSP. What seemed like a golden ticket situation immediately turned sour as the burden of joining a group with seven years worth of solidified relationships, history, and accolades weighed heavy on the soon-to-be idol shoulder. As for Camellia, they weren't as eager to accept a brand new face into the group, and rumors spawn that the remaining Kara members weren't thrilled with the situation either. <laughs> Unnecessary hate instantly followed Yongji, and she was outcasted by her own group's fandom, and had to prove twice as hard that she deserved a seat at the table. One month after Kara Project concluded, the reorganized quartet released their 6 EP, Day and Night, with the lead single, Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia re-sparked interest in Kara after many were unsure of their future. Although not produced by Sweet Tunes, the lead single remained true to the group's color in terms of sound and style. The propelling beats get going right from the start and never lets up. The rich layers of synth and harmonies combined with disco flair allowed the song to shine more than the sophisticated dance floor filler. As for the choreography, it was technically demanding, as the groups focused heavily on the members' upper bodies, sharply whacking around their arms and making sure their timing is precise to get the synchronized. Oh, with the inclusion of Yongji, she was able to infuse a new energy into the group and proved to be a perfect fit. Along with Wonder Girls and Girls Day, Kara is often mentioned as an example of successful member reorganization because, let's face it, we've all seen what it's like when a lineup change can easily tear apart a group. Nine days after the Korean release, Kara released the Japanese version. This marked the second time the group had released and promoted a song simultaneously in South Korea and Japan after jumping. The same day, Kara won first place on Show Champion, making it their first place award as a reorganized group. To show their gratitude, Kara bowed to their fans. After wrapping up Mamma Mia promotions, Kara flew back to Japan to embark on their third Japanese tour. For this event, Yongju had to memorize more than 30 songs from Kara's discography in a short period of time. 2015 was business as usual, as Kara came back with Japanese promotions and went on to release their seventh EP, In Love, with the lead single Cupid. <laughs> For this release, fans were expecting the same demanding dance floor anthems Kara has hammered consistently. Yet, Cupid falls flat when it comes to their standard formula and plays it safe. It may not have been their most ambitious song, but it did its job at showcasing the members. The promotion cycle began on NBC's show Champion by performing Starlight and their promotional single Cupid. The following week, they took first place and won a trophy on their comeback stage at MTV Korea's The Show on June 2nd. It's a shame the single didn't get as much love as her previous releases, and Kara rarely recognizes the single as well, and usually leaves Mamma Mia as a repetitive song for Kara's third generation. The following month, the group released their fifth Japanese studio album, Girl Story, on June 17, 2015. 
That album included the Japanese version of Mamma Mia and their previous Japanese single Summer Gig, an announcement of their fourth Japanese tour was subsequently announced and began on September 1st in Osaka. After wrapping up their Japanese tour, on January 15th, 2016, DSP made their unfortunate announcement that Kyuri, Sungyan, and Hara failed to renew their contracts with the company, resulting in the group's disbandment. In the same press release, the agency noted that Yongji would continue with her music career as a soloist under the company. Although the news didn't come as a major shock, fans still grieved over the announcement until Kata's leader Kyuri contested the reports. In her interview with Harold Puff, Kyuri insisted the group didn't disband. It's not like Kara has disbanded, it seems the word came out by accident, but since we're not in the same company, I think that activities will be less than before. The word disbanding is a simple and easy way to express a situation in which all the members have separated, but for the people who don't know us may think so, and we are talking about releasing a car album if there's a good opportunity, so I don't think of us as disbanding at all. Since then, multiple members expressed the same sentiment. Following their indefinite hiatus, Cutie signed with Motion Media to pursue an acting career full-time and starred in multiple dramas and movies. In 2017, the idol turned actress won the Hollywood Star Award for her drama Lovers in Bloom at the 2017 Korea Drama Awards. Sungyeon subsequently signed with JYD Company after her departure with DSP. Since buckling down on acting, Sungyeon has starred in several hit dramas, including the Hello My 20 series. For the same series, she won the Hollywood Star Award at the 9th Korea Drama Awards. Sungyeon released her own solo songs such as You and I, Do You Remember, and I Love Me. She also released two Japanese mini-albums in 2019. In 2020, the all-rounder entertainer signed with the new agency YGX Entertainment and has continued acting. After her departure with DSP, Hada signed with Kias Entertainment to manage her activities. Since releasing her single Choco Chip Cookies off her Alohara EP in 2015, Hada stuck to singing OSTs and ventured into acting until she released her single Wild in 2018. In 2019, she signed with a different company to handle her Japanese promotions and released her last single, Midnight Queen. As for the only Kara member to stay under DSP, Yongji bounced around a lot from acting to music. I'm 혼자서 불러야 한다는 게좀 부담스러웠겠다 그런 생각을 했어요. 그래서 참 잘했죠. From an outsider's perspective, it looked like DSP didn't know what to do with the singer and didn't utilize her to her full potential. On December 8, 2016, DSP Media revealed Youngji as the first hidden member of their new co-ed group Card. She was promoted with the group for their first project single Oh Na Na, which was released on December 13. Eight months later, Yongji eventually debuted as a solo artist with her single, Memory Clock. According to Yongji, the most difficult time she had to endure was right before the group disbanded. Yongji recalled it was really hard for her to do solo activities because she didn't know how to do anything by herself. Yongji also ventured into acting through many supporting roles and made numerous cameo appearances. Aside from acting, Yongji became active in variety shows where she was able to showcase her personality the best. And in August 2021, Yongji renewed her contract with DSP Media. While Kara remained inactive for four years, four of the members, Judy, Sungyeon, Nicole, and Jiyoung, got together to celebrate their 14th anniversary. Camilas were happy to see most of the members reunite after so many years and remain optimistic that the group could reunite once again on stage. While there were no rumors of a reunion stage or comeback, on June 8th, 2022, fans noticed Nicole, Jiyoung, and Yongji followed each other on social media, and two days later, something monumental happened. Q 
Cutie, Sungyeon, Nicole, Jiang, and Yongji shared special photos commemorating their 15th anniversary, family photo shoot style. All five members also tagged the like Kohara in each of their posts. The photo sent the internet and camellias into a frenzy. The event also sparked many questions revolving around the relationship between the new and former members. <laughs> Oh,我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。我知道。
to ending fairies. Oh, 아 맞아 우리 그거 연습해야 돼. 저도 사실 엔딩 포즈 진짜 잘하거든요. 아 나는 시킨 바로 아직 카메라 해요, 뭐예요? 그, 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 그거 스트레스 받는 게좀 있어요? 저 진짜 스트레스 받아요. 진짜? 저는 완전 그때가 아니잖아요. 아니지 다. 어. 언니 모르겠어. 진짜 부끄러워했어요. 어, 저 그런 거 진짜 못 처음 봤어. 맞아 언니가 부끄러워. 이렇게 하고. 근데 내가 보니까. 자자자자. 어. 오케이! 아니 근데 이제 내일 모레 서른인데 It also makes my heart happy to see the members so happy and playful with each other after all these years especially the interactions between Nicole, Jiang and Yongji It's all worth it and I'm sorry, I'm so embarrassed but I'm just so lucky to be a part of this history It's probably the most important day of my life and it seems like Camellias aren't the only ones celebrating their comeback, as other idols in the industry are celebrating as well. Car still plans to promote entering 2023 and have announced that they will hold several fan meetings across Japan. They also hope they can hold a fan meeting in Korea. <laughs> forward to seeing what's next for the group and staying hopeful that we can get another single from them in the future and fingers crossed for collaboration between Kara, Sweet Tunes, and Bayu Jung. Throughout their decade and a half long career, Kara changed the face of K-pop with each and every step they took as artists. They made their mark in history while revolutionizing the Korean entertainment culture with boldness, grace, and enthusiasm along every twist and turn of their journey. Car has inspired many artists through their pioneering sound, as well as served as an example of resilience during difficult times, showing that no matter what obstacles you may face along the way, nothing is impossible if you have the determination and courage to continue on with your journey. Although Car has passed on the baton to a newer generation, they will forever remain iconic within K-pop culture thanks to all of their accomplishments over the past decade that is still being felt today. In the comments, tell me what your favorite Car song is and what are your thoughts on their recent comeback. And if you like these type of history videos, drop down in the comments what group I should cover next. Before I end this video, I want to thank each and every one of you who has subscribed and watched my videos over the past few years. By the time this video is uploaded, I will have reached 100,000 subscribers, which is a major milestone for me. And what better way to celebrate with a history video on one of my favorite groups? Thank you again, and with that being said, thank you for watching and enjoy your stay.